Constantino. Dole. Pound for pound. Okay, we're here with Eddie Hearn. Eddie obviously we just launched the series in Mexico. Our series this is the first fight. Cesar Ray Martinez, we would love to talk about the card. It's a great card. I mean, you know, when I looked at the matchmaking, you, know, you look at fights that Chris, Christian Duran's in, Pacheco fighting a 7 0, Duran's fighting a guy who's like 15 0, 15 and 1. This is how they do things here. This is why we love it so much. You've got a brilliant co main event, Matelon against Argumedo, and a brilliant main event. You know, Joe Cordova, who had a couple of losses early in his career, has come back really strong. And Julio Cesar Martinez, for me, I feel like this is the best, best uh, young prospect in Mexico. I say prospect, he's already a world champion. But this guy has so much more to achieve. You know, he's talking about fights with Estrada and, you know, that whole division, from light flyweight to super flyweight, there are so many great fights to be made. But, you know, he's got to come through on Saturday. He hasn't fought for a long time. Mm. So there's a lot of pressure on him. Why do you think he's so special and why do you love him so much? Because I love people that have flaws, you know, like, and I'm not even talking about physically. I'm talking about emotionally, mentally. This guy comes from a very, very tough area in Mexico City. All of a sudden, he got championships, he got money, you know, and I think he's made mistakes. And now he's realized why he wants it so bad. And I love that, you know, I love people who have so much ability, they don't realize how much ability they've got. Right. Like I've seen him fight before, I just thought, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure he can be beaten. And this is a tough fight because Cordova, people are looking at it, was he like 14 and four? Oh yeah, he's got some losses, but he's on a great run as well. And you know, he's looking at it saying, I could become champion. So I really feel that, you know, people talking about the Estrada fight and all this stuff, but ultimately, you know, this is about Julio Cesar Martinez doing the job on Saturday night. And great that Mexican world champions can get the chance to defend their titles here rather than traveling around the world. That's really important to what we're doing. And obviously this is not a one and done. You're obviously looking to find the next Canelo Alvarez, the next yeah. Cesar Ray Martinez. How confident are you that you will find that? Well, we've got the best partners. Hmm. You know, I mean, we've got Julio Cesar Martinez, uh, obviously fighting on Saturday, but behind the scenes, we have Canelo Promotions and, and Sal Alvarez. We have Eddie Reynoso and Classy Taliento. Every young fighter wants to be, in Mexico wants to be part of this team. And they see talent better than anyone. Eddie Reynoso spots talent better than anyone. And you know what it was? It was like, when Mauricio Lara came over and beat Josh Warrington, I said to Eddie Reynoso, wow, this kid, you know, he said, Eddie, we have so many fighters like that. So many fighters that don't get the opportunity. So this is why we're doing this, to give young fighters the opportunity to follow their dreams in Mexico, to become the next Canelo Alvarez. You know, and um, it's really important for Mexican boxing, and this is just the start on Saturday. And obviously, you guys, the zone just went global. Yeah. And you guys all obviously launched the zone in Mexico. Yes. 45 pesos, which is really yeah, affordable. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah, it's an amazing product globally. I mean, for the first time, we have a platform where all of our events around the world will be broadcast on any device, you know, your smart TV in your living room, to your mobile phone, to any country in the world. So it's a massive opportunity for the fighters to get global exposure, but it's also a huge opportunity for Matchroom to go into key markets and start creating localized events. We've just done a huge deal with them in the UK. We all know we do and work with The Zone in the US. Now Mexico, we do Italy, we do Spain, we're gonna to go to Australia, to Canada, to Scandinavia. It's so exciting. But this was a really important territory for me because I love boxing and you guys love boxing, right? So every time I've done, I've done two shows in Mexico before, one in Tijuana, one in Hermosillo. And both times, at four o'clock, the place was full. Mm. Because everyone wanted to watch every fight, and that's because they're fight fans. Right. And they love boxing, it's in your blood, it's in your heritage, and I love that. And British, you know, the Mexican fight fans are quite similar to British fight fans as well. They're incredibly passionate, they're incredibly noisy, you know, they like to have a good time, they like to have a drink, they like to enjoy the show, and they love great fights. And that's what we're gonna be bringing you. Switching topics, uh, any update on Canelo Alvarez? I know he said he's in vacations, but obviously he's looking to unify all the belts at Super Middleweight, any update on that? Sure, I'm going to see him tonight with Eddie, and we're gonna talk through the next move and the next step. Of course, we've made clear we want the Caleb Plant fight, and it's time to start getting that uh, into full process now. Um, obviously, he had his, his wedding and his honeymoon, and I think he's probably ready to get back to work now. And, you know, we have some um, things to discuss tonight, some options, some dates, some ideas, and ultimately, Saul and Eddie will tell me what to do. You know, they're the bosses, and 
and um, we'll go through the numbers tonight and start making plans. Earlier this week, a uh, reporter asked Eddie about the Canelo Kayla plant fight. Mm. They asked him what needs to happen in order for it to happen. Would you guys sign a two fight deal with PBC? And he's like, we're not tying ourselves to anybody. Yeah. We're extremely happy with Eddie Hearn, yeah. the work he's done. Uh, Canelo's popularity has even grown so much the past six months. Mm. What do you got to say about that? Uh, it's flattering. I mean, look, we're not. I, I just believe that if you have a great relationship with people, if you're honest, you don't need to tie them down in long-term deals. So I put my trust in them. I said to them, let me show you what I can do for you. Right? And we did it for the Callum Smith fight, for Yildirim, and then for Billy Joe Saunders. I think everyone's happy. So there's no need for me to start saying to Sal, right now, you must sign a three, five fight deal, six fight, seven fight. He told me, I want you to work for us and keep this journey going together. Right. And that's, I take that extremely seriously. And it's an honor. So, you know, I would love to be involved with this team for a long time. When we boxed Callum Smith, when we boxed Billy Joe Saunders, I represented both guys. I want to pick him up and celebrate with Eddie and with, with Saul. And that comes through the Caleb plant fight. Because for me to be involved and to see Saul become undisputed champion is, even selfishly for me, that is an incredible honor. So I really want to be involved in that process. Saul's told me you're involved in this fight as well, and I'm sure we'll work together. I believe I'll work with Saul uh, Alvarez for the rest of his career. I really do. But I don't need no, you know, now you've got to do this, now you've got to do that. We have a great relationship. We, get, we do great business together. We're all incredibly honest with each other. They're in charge. I work for them and I will deliver for them every time. Right, and what I meant when I said that was like, would you tie a, a co-promotion or sign to fight deal with PBC? And well, like, no. what, this, you know, at, the, at the end of the day, uh, this fight is about Caleb Plant. So what we have to do is we have to look at the best opportunities for Saul, and you know the PBC have to look at the best opportunities for Caleb. We have to look at the money on offer from the zone. we have to look at the money on offer from Fox, and we have to make the right decision that everybody's happy with. Right. But it's not about, you know, the great thing about um, Saul being a free network agent is that he has the ability to fight whoever he wants, wherever he wants. So, you know, it, it, I, I think the first process is you know, to make that offer to, to Caleb Plant, and I'm sure Fox will make an offer to do that fight. Um, you know, he's made it clear he doesn't want an offer that involves a two, three fight deal. This is a one fight from everybody, you know, for me, for DAZN for uh, PBC, this is just about the undisputed fight. And we should allow the fighters to be free to enter these kind of fights to create their own legacy and to make as much money as possible. This isn't about promoters, this isn't about networks, this is about saying to the fighters, this is your moment. And I hope everybody, I know from our side, we're, we're ready to do the fight wherever it needs to be done. And obviously, you saw, I don't know if you saw Charlo's fight, his performance yeah. against Montiel. He called out Canelo, he wants that fight as well. What you make of his performance? I thought, you know, no disrespect to Montiel, like he fought real tough, but Charlo struggled in that fight. I know he won wide, but it wasn't an impressive performance. I do think Charlo is a tremendous fighter. Canelo Alvarez will fight absolutely anyone, anyone. He will never duck any fighter. But what he has is a plan to make history. So right now, he's a super middleweight. He wants to be undisputed. He wants all the belts. Charlo's a middleweight. You know, Demetrius Andrade is a middleweight. Those two should be fighting. You know, you've got both those guys calling him out. Canelo knows what he's doing. Demetrius Andrade and Charlo need to fight now, right? Two American world middleweight champions. What are they doing? Then, the winner of that fight all of a sudden becomes a bit of a star. And they can talk, start talking about moving up to super middleweight and fighting Canelo Alvarez. That's what needs to happen. Canelo Alvarez is the absolute pound for pound king. He has the right to fight whoever he wants. But the good news is he's fighting champion after champion after champion. Right? Right. So you don't have to worry about Saul. He will fight anyone. Yeah. And maybe after this he'll go to he'll go to light heavyweight and he may fight Better Biev. And he may fight Bivol. Yeah, he he doesn't care. Fight. He doesn't care. Yeah. He told me about Better Biev. No, I said, well, shouldn't we fight Bivol first? No, we want him. You know, but that's that's the beauty of Sao Alvarez. He will fight anyone. And Charlo, I'm sure he'll fight Charlo, but what for what? Like what? It's a voluntary defense of his world title. So is Demetrius. And they're both tremendous fighters. But let's see them two fight in a unification. 
and then we can start, you know, looking at those big fights. Even Benavides said, "Hey, let's me and you, let's fight." And then we Winner gets that Canelo. Yeah, but ben, you know, the one, one thing I like about Benavidez, he's quite honest. You know, where he says, no, we need those kind of fights to get up to a, you know, to... It doesn't really matter what you have if you're a champion in the division that Sal is in. Because he wants to fight all the champions. But when you talk about middleweight world champion, he's not, he's not at middleweight. He's never going to fight middleweight again. You have to come to the king. Yeah, but you have to come to the king, but you have to come with something. So you have to come with a belt or with a, with a huge profile or something but it's not even profile Sal doesn't even care about it he wants the he wants the legacy he wants the belts he wants to beat the champions and all he's focused on right now is becoming undisputed he promoted Jake Paul's uh, first fight he's 3-0 now I'm sure you heard the news yeah he even said hey I can see myself fighting Canelo in the future what do you got to say about this <laughs> listen I like Jake Paul because I think what he's doing is he's fun you know he's making noise and look I, I, I was very vocal that the Mayweather Logan Paul fight was a joke, it was a disaster, right? But Jake Paul against these guys, you know, Woodley, I don't mind it. You know, Jake Paul's training hard, he's working hard, but let's just calm down. You know, he couldn't beat most debutants in boxing, so to beat the pound for pound king, you know, definitely not, but let him do his own thing. We are focused right now on boxing with the zone. We want to put the best fights on the most exciting fight cards all around the world. And Canelo Alvarez is the pound for pound number one. You know, you've got our other great fighter, Anthony Joshua, probably the biggest star in global boxing, both of them. You know, th this is what we want. These, and both of those guys are chasing legacy. They're chasing history. And that's what I'm focused on. Because I understand the YouTube numbers. I did one. I did two. Right. Right? I, didn't, the train. I never felt comfortable doing it, but I did feel comfortable with the numbers. Right? Yeah. But deep down, I'm someone that's been around boxing for 33 years, right? And I'm a hardcore fight fan. So that's what I love. And I just feel that right now, if we don't get hold of boxing and start making the great fights, you'll see more and more of that stuff. Mm. I saw Paul Malnagy said the same yeah, thing. Yeah, which will kill boxing. Right. So we need to make sure that we put more effort and more focus into great fights. And why did you say the Jake, uh, Logan Paul made when it was Because it's a complete mismatch. Like Jake Paul against Tyrone Woodley, I've no idea what's going to happen. Tyrone Woodley can't really, he's not a sh great boxer or a striker. Jake Paul's a, not really a great boxer, but he's, you know, he's, he's a, uh, a novice, really. And I don't know what's going to happen. Therefore, I might watch it. Floyd against Logan Paul, one of the greatest fighters of all time against a zero and one YouTuber. That's bullshit. That's, that's thieving. Yeah? That's going into your pockets and stealing your money. So we shouldn't accept that. But what we can accept is 50-50 fights or intriguing fights or fights that we don't know what's going to happen. That's okay, but I want to just make great fights, great boxing fights. That's why coming here is so important because people are excited. You know, you look at Julio Cesar Martinez, Joel Cordova, Argumedo, Duran, Valenzuela, all the other prospects on the card. It's the start of something. But you can only grow boxing if you have the talent, Paul. And in Mexico, you have so much talent, so much talent. You know, I don't want to do four shows here in six months. I want to do 20 shows here. You know, because that's how you build the talent. The momentum. Yeah, so I'm excited. My last question, because I know these guys want to get you. No Pacquiao Spence, what do you think? Um, I think it's a good fight. I think, uh, I just think Spence is too fresh, too young. You know, I think that's, uh, he's going to win that fight. But, you know, Pacquiao's a legend. All right, thank you. Eddie. All right. Constantino Garcia here for Little Giant Boxing. Make sure you guys subscribe and follow me on social media at Constantino Garcia.